Comforter, Spirit of Truth, Lord, everywhere present and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us of all impurity and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord, blot out our sins, O Master, pardon our iniquity. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. As the kingdom of the power and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Glory to the holy, consubstantial, life creating and divided Trinity, always now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. O Lord, why are they multiplied that afflict me? Many rise up against me. Many say unto my soul, There is no salvation for him in his God. But thou, O Lord, art my helper, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, and save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all who without cause are mine enemies. The teeth of sinners hast thou broken. Salvation is of the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. I lay to be down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, nor chasten me in thy wrath. For thine arrows are fastened in me, and thou hast laid thy hand heavily upon me. There is no healing in my flesh in the face of thy wrath. There is no peace in my bones in the face of my sin. For mine iniquities are risen higher than my head. As a heavy burden have they pressed heavily upon me. My bruises are become noisome and corrupt in the face of my folly. I have been wretched and utterly bowed down until the end. All the day long I went with downcast face. For my loins are filled with mockings and there is no healing in my flesh. I am afflicted and humbled exceedingly. I have roared from the groaning of my heart. 
O Lord, before thee is all my desire, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart is troubled, my strength hath failed me, and the light of mine eyes, even this, is not with me. My friends and my neighbors drew nigh over against me and stood, and my nearest of kin stood afar off. And they that sought after my soul used violence, and they that sought evils for me spake vain things, and craftiness all the day long did they meditate. But as for me, like a deaf man, I heard them not, and was as a speechless man that openeth not his mouth. I became as a man that heareth not, and that hath in his mouth no reproofs. For in thee have I hoped, O Lord, that thou wilt hearken unto me, O Lord my God. For I said, Let never mine enemies rejoice over me. Yea, when my feet were shaken, those men spake boastful words against me. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, and I will take heed concerning my sin. But my enemies live and are made stronger than I, and they that hated me unjustly are multiplied. They that render me evil for good slandered me because I pursued goodness. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. O God, my God, unto thee I rise early at dawn. My soul hath thirsted for thee. How often hath my flesh longed after thee in a land barren and untrodden and of water? So in the sanctuary have I appeared before thee to see thy power and thy glory. For thy mercy is better than lives, and my lips shall praise thee. So shall I bless thee in my life, and in thy name will I lift up my hands. As with marrow and fatness let my soul be filled, and with lips of rejoicing shall my mouth praise thee. If I remembered thee on my bed, at the dawn I meditated on thee. Thou art become my helper, and in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. But as for these, in vain have they sought after my soul, they shall go into the nethermost parts of the earth. They shall be surrendered unto the edge of the sword, fortunes for foxes shall they be. But the king shall be glad in God, every one shall be praised that sweareth by him. For the mouth of them is stopped that speak unjust things. At the dawn I meditated on thee, for thou art become my helper, in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Lord God of my salvation, by day have I cried, and by night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, bow down thine ear unto my supplication. For filled with evils is my soul, and my life unto Hades hath drawn not. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am become as a man without help, free among the dead, like the bodies of the slain that sleep in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. They lay me in the lowest pit, in darkness and in the shadow of death. Against me is thine anger made strong, and all thy billows hast thou brought upon me. Thou hast removed my friends afar from me. They have made me an abomination unto themselves. I have been delivered up, and have not come forth. Thine eyes are grown weak from poverty. I have cried unto thee, O Lord, the whole day long. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Nay, for the dead wilt thou work wonders, or shall physicians raise them up, that they may give thanks unto thee. Nay, shall any in thy, the grave tell of thy mercy and of thy truth in that destruction. Nay, shall thy wonders be known in that darkness, and thy righteousness in that land that is forgotten. But as for me, unto thee, O Lord, have I cried, and in the morning shall my prayer come before thee. Wherefore, O Lord, dost thou cast off my soul, and turnest thy face away from me? A poor man am I, and in troubles from my youth. Yea, having been exalted, I was humbled and brought to distress. Thy furies have passed upon me, and thy terrors have sorely troubled me. They came round about me like water. All the day long they compassed me about together. Thou hast removed afar from me, friend and neighbor, and mine acquaintances, because of my misery. The God of my salvation by day have I cried and by night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, bow down thine ear unto my supplication. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all that he hath done for thee. Who is gracious unto all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine infirmities, who redeemeth thy life from corruption, who crowneth thee with mercy and compassion, who fulfilleth thy desire with good things, and thy youth shall be renewed as the eagles. The Lord performeth deeds of mercy and executeth judgment for all them that are wrong. He hath made his ways known unto Moses, unto the sons of Israel, the things that he hath willed. Compassionate and merciful is the Lord, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy. 
Not unto the end will he be angered, and neither unto eternity will he be wroth. Not according to our iniquities has he dealt with us, neither according to our sins hath he rewarded us. For according to the height of heaven from the earth, the Lord hath made his mercy to prevail over them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our iniquities from us. Like as a father hath compassion upon his sons, so hath the Lord had compassion upon them that fear him. For he knoweth whereof we are made, he hath remembered that we are dust. As for man his days are as the grass, as a flower of the field, so shall he blossom forth. For when the wind is passed over it, then shall it be gone, and no longer will it know the place thereof. <clears throat> but the mercy of the Lord is from eternity, even unto eternity, upon them that fear him. His righteousness is upon sons of sons, upon them that keep his testament, and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord in heaven hath prepared his throne, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, mighty in strength, that perform his word, to hear the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all ye his works in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In every place of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. <coughs> o Lord, hear my prayer, give ear unto my supplication and thy truth. Hearken unto me in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living justify. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath humbled my life down to the earth. He has sat me in darkness as those that have been long dead. And my spirit within me has become despondent. Within me my heart is troubled, I remembered the days of old, I meditated on all thy works, I pondered on the creations of thy hands, I stretched forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsted after thee like a waterless land. Quickly hear me, O Lord, my spirit hath fainted away. Turn not thy face away from me, lest it be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for in thee have I put my hope. Cause me to know, O Lord, the way that I should walk, for unto thee have I lifted up my soul. Rescue me from mine enemies, O Lord, unto thee have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. For thy name's sake, O Lord, shalt thou quicken me. In thy righteousness shalt thou bring my soul out of affliction, and in thy mercy shalt thou utterly destroy mine enemies. And thou shalt cut off all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Hearken unto me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Hearken unto me, unto me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. In
peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would re rejoice, because I said, I am going to the Father. My Father is greater than I. Now I have told you before it comes, that when it co does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, in, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father and the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Rise and let us go from here. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered. And then and they gather them, and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. But that by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. If the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, who lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these th things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If, they had, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. And if I had done, not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. And now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. <clears throat> you also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was not with you. And now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. And if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the world, ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. And whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will, declare, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. 
little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said among themselves, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, because I go to the Father. They said, Therefore, what is this that he says? A little while. We do not know what he is saying. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman when she was a woman when she is in labor has sorrow, because her hour has come, but as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish, her joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. In that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day he will, he will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things, and have no need that anyone should question you. By this we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, and has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in, my, that in me you may have peace, in the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, and your Son may also glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to them whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you, for I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have surely known that I came forth from you, and have, they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world that they may know, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is true. As you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through your work, through their work, that all they that all that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me. I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, and they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as <coughs> you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you gave me, may be with me where I am, 
and that they may be called my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I declare to them your name, and will declare it, that the love which, with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, and there was a garden which he and his disciples entered.
Let us again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by thy grace. <coughs> Most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious, Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our Lord. and to the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> now and ever and unto ages of ages. Are you? And he answered, I am not. 
Now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coal stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. And the high priest had asked Jesus about his disciples and doctrine. And Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world I always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where the Jews always met, and in secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood by Jesus uh, struck him with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? And Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter stood and warned himself, and therefore they said to him, You also are, are you are not also one of his disciples, are you? But he denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of him whose ear Peter fell off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium, and it was early morning. But they themselves did not go into the Praetorium, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat of the Passover.
again and again in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all <coughs> our life unto Christ our God. Sanctified and glorified is thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Saying, I do not know what you are saying. 
And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And a little while later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. And he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus who had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So he went out and wept bitterly.
Therefore, when Pilate heard that say, he was the more afraid. He went again into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Jesus answered, You could have no power at all left against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. And then on Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. But now it was the preparation day of the Passover at about the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him. Crucify him. I have said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, You have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified.
So the governor answered and said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Now Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? And they all said to him, let him be crucified. Then the governor said, why what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, let him be crucified. Now when Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but that rather a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And they twisted the crown of thorns. And they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they said, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him and put on his own clothes and led him away to be crucified. Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene and Simon by name, and him they compelled to bear his cross. Oh. 
but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking among themselves with the scribes, said he saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the cries of the King of Israel descend now from the cross, that we may see and be. The curtain of the temple was torn in two, 
The mountains quaked and the rocks were split, and with us the believing thief cried out to thee, O Savior, remember me in thy kingdom. Blessed are you and men shall revive you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you, falsely for my sake. Let us not let us destroy the legal bond against us, O Lord. Thou would strike into the dead, and there just bind the tyrant, that we now offer the bond to death by thy resurrection. By it we have delivered the Lord, who love us mankind. We pray out to thee, remember us, also a Savior in thy kingdom. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Thou hast lifted up on the cross, O Lord, thou didst destroy the power of death, and as God thou didst cancel the legal bond against us, grant the repentance of the thief also unto us who in faith, O only lover of mankind, and we cry out to thee, O Christ our God, remember us also, O Savior, in thy kingdom.
to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of the skull. They gave him sour wine, he filled with gall to drink. When he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him, and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there. They put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right, another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. You are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest, also mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Some cannot say, if he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross. We will believe him. Trust in God that will deliver him now if he will have him. And he said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Now the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone, let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Then the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God.
said, Father, forgive them, for they know not, know not what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, saying, This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing that you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that side, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances of the woman who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things.
Why does thou run so swiftly? Is there another wedding in Cana and art thou hastening there to turn the water into wine? Shall I go with thee, my child, or shall I wait for thee? Speak some word to me, a word. Do not cast me by in silence. Thou hast preserved me in virginity and thou art my son. Ignorant of the law and their impiety, 
spreading the words of the prophets in vain and to no purpose. Unjustly they led thee, the master of all, as a lamb to the slaughter, thee do we magnify. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. Moved by jealous wickedness, the priests and scribes took him, who is by nature and life and life giver, and they delivered him to the Gentiles to be put to death. Him do we magnify. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Like many dogs, they compass thee, O King, and struck thee on the face. They questioned thee, and bore false witness against thee. And all these things thou hast endured to save us all.
there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour that disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled the sponge with the sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be, might be broken, and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scriptures should be fulfilled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have
summoned the centurion and he asked him if he, if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out from the centurion, he ran to the body to Joseph. Then he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen. And he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock and rolled the stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph observed where he was Lord of all 
eye looks upon the humble, who with thine all seeing eye looks down upon all creation. Unto thee have we bow the neck of our soul and body, and we pray thee, holy of holies, stretch forth thy invisible hand from thy holy dwelling place and bless us all. And if in any way we have sinned, whether willingly or unwillingly, pardon us inasmuch as thou art good and lovest mankind, granting us thy good things in this world and beyond this world. For thine it is to have mercy on us and to save us, O our God, and unto thee he is to glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And that we may be accounted worthy to listen to the Holy Gospel, let us pray to the Lord God.
day of operation, chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, So remember while you are still alive, for the deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore I command them to be made secure until the third day, as his disciples come by night and steal him away. Say to the people, He has risen from the dead. The last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, How the God go your way? Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the God. Always now, never unto ages of ages. 
salvation of the human race. We're left in awe and we're left in silence. It's a silence which I encourage all of us to guard this evening and into tomorrow, great Holy Friday, this holiest of days, when all mortal flesh will keep, will keep silent before the cross. And it is, remember the strictest fast day of the year for those who are able uh, to refrain from from food and water, if not the whole day, at least for a good portion of the day, to go with our Lord to the cross. But we think of not just symbolically. We heard those who mocked our Lord say to him, come down from the cross, come down from the cross, if you are the Son of God. That is the temptation of the enemy, who would offer an easy way out in our lives, for the difficulties, for the trials, for the relationship, whatever it may be. Come down from the cross, says the evil one. And our Lord shows us that salvation is not from the cross, but through the cross. And through His grace, through His strength, we embrace with His help the struggles in our lives, the hardships out of love for Him, out of gratitude for Him, as we stand before the cross. So let us go forth this night meditating on these things. And may, may God be with you and His peace be with you. Uh, this evening. Our next service here will be for the Vespers of Holy Friday, the burial service at 3 p.m., uh, just like as we had served uh, t tonight inside the church. God bless you. <laughs>